Hey guys, Monsel here with Nutripedia, and I am in beautiful, sunny Austin, Texas, although recently it's been raining. And I wanted to give you guys an update on some nootropics. I know I've been relatively lax on producing videos lately, and I've been tinkering with some stuff that I'm excited about and I wanna share with you, and specifically, it's around nicotine. So guys, I know there are tons of stereotypes about nicotine and growing up in America especially, it is easy to be essentially brainwashed, for the lack of a better word, with the idea that nicotine is bad, that it is uh, addictive, it is you know harmful, it is all of these bad things. And the problem is almost all of that mental perception around nicotine is really, uh, it should be geared towards smoking cigarettes. All of those problems do exist, etc. but it's almost always exclusively the smoking of tobacco in modern cigarettes that creates those side effects and problems. So first of all, when we look at lung cancer, when we look at uh, all the different mortality risks that are associated with uh, smoking cigarettes, they almost seem to just be attributed to nicotine or at least convoluted in the same conversation. But for our purposes, for cognitive improvement, we have to consider them separately. So nicotine and tobacco are completely different things. Most of the mortality studies focus on uh, the use of tobacco and specifically in situations where it's smoking and you know different cancers, lung cancer, esophageal cancer, etc. Now another common misconception about nicotine is that it is incredibly addictive. And that's why when you smoke cigarettes, it's really hard to quit smoking. When people are you know, using cigarettes, they go to nicotine gum or some the patch as a way of weaning themselves off of the nicotine from the cigarettes. But again, looking at the scientific literature shows that this is not really the case. There's about eight different studies that all show nicotine by itself is not really all that addictive. The problem is when you combine nicotine with an MAOI, and MAOI is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which is present in the tobacco. So tobacco has this MAOI combined with nicotine, which can be addictive. However, the nicotine by itself does not seem to have the same addiction potential. So it's, again, something you have to separate the tobacco from this one specific psychoactive substance, the nicotine. Now, just as a disclaimer, that doesn't mean nicotine is not addictive. It's a stimulant, and so it can be addictive, and especially for people who have an addictive personality. But from a scientific perspective, it is true that these are separate. Tobacco has both MAOI and nicotine making it addictive, whereas nicotine by itself is not addictive. Now, if you want a reason for this, you might consider tobacco uh, utilizing certain compounds as a way of propagating their species. It just so happens that combining these alkaloids uh, in a way uh, makes it addictive and makes people more likely to grow it and cultivate it. So it's almost an evolutionary advantage for the tobacco plant to be producing this MAOI and nicotine at the same time because look what it's done for humans and we decide to grow it everywhere. So what we want to do is we just want to separate it 
in a very specific way so that we can use the nicotine by itself. So now you have an understanding about nicotine and hopefully dispelled some of that baggage that it carries from decades of anti-smoking legislation and campaigns and advertising, which by the way, I think there's a lot of uh, validity to all that science on, on tobacco and smoking in general. And I think that it's actually a pretty interesting model that we were able as a community, as a society in America to create such a perspective about smoking cigarettes. That being said, we've conflated it with nicotine and that's just not true. Now the number one benefit of using nicotine is purely the stimulation that comes from it. It is a stimulant, it improves focus and concentration, and in fact there's numerous studies that show it can actually reduce the symptoms of ADHD. Now what I found most interesting was the studies on focus and concentration with nicotine often center around this term wakefulness, which is a, a term that is used with modafinil and adrafinil, other modafinil class drugs. And wakefulness is uh, typically, I had considered it only a product of uh, the modafinil class, but it seems that the scientific literature focuses on that subject as well for nicotine. Now from personal experience, I have found stimulation to be at that magnitude and in fact, uh, I have uh, you know, felt even today, I took some nicotine today, uh, a lot of the stimulatory effects before making this video. Now in contrast to modafinil, I do not experience the same side effects, which is a huge boon for some other people who are interested in taking something like modafinil. They don't want the side effects and they don't want to use something that is uh, technically illegal without a prescription. There's evidence that nicotine can also improve learning and memory formation, which is if you followed my channel or followed my work at all, you know it is somewhat unique to have a uh, nootropic compound that can both improve focus and concentration and memory and learning because oftentimes those tend to be competing processes. Now, when improving memory and learning ability with nicotine, there's a few different studies, one of which was done on uh, IQ levels and IQ scores, which is quite surprising because IQ is generally known to be one of those uh, markers that doesn't change much, doesn't fluctuate much uh, on, a, on a population basis. So that was one interesting study. There's others with working memory and things like that. But generally speaking, uh, nicotine is a way of improving memory. And what I find most interesting about this is it's actually a cholinergic drug, which would make sense for the memory and learning benefits. The cholinergic system is a system associated with uh, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. It is heavily involved with uh, learning and memory formation, and it's the same family as the racetam family, for example. Now, nicotine is a cholinergic drug despite the stimulatory properties, which makes it very unique because it's working on a completely different pathway than many of the other stimulants that you might be using, whether it's caffeine or modafinil or Adderall, whatever the case may be. Traditional stimulants are almost always dopamine based, whereas nicotine is cholinergic. Now I do want to take a brief aside to mention a few side effects. Because it is stimulatory, because it is a powerful nootropic, there are side effects, especially for people who may be struggling with high blood pressure. Uh, there is one specific study that I want to focus on which shows that high, high doses of nicotine can actually reduce neurogenesis in mice. So what that study was saying that if you take too much nicotine, which I see that the numbers are around 14 to 18 milligrams, you can actually reduce 
your ability to generate new connections and new, uh, you know, generate new brain cells. So this, uh, th there's a dose dependent relationship, but that specific study, uh, it focused on high doses of, of nicotine and it forgot to mention the fact that caffeine does something similar. At high doses, uh, caffeine can actually cause the same uh, issue. So it's almost you know, mirror images of each other and nothing to be seriously concerned about. Although taking a high dose, there'll be all kinds of other concerns and you'll probably feel miserable before you get to a dose that's uh, harming your cognitive performance. So guys, how do you get started if you want to use nicotine? My suggestion is to start slow, as with anything. Now I'm very sensitive, uh, but I would really suggest avoiding vaping, avoiding anything where you're using your lungs, because even though that administration method of getting the nicotine directly into your lungs might uh, feel good, might feel uh, effective, I am just not a huge proponent of using my lungs to, uh, to use any kind of nootropic. Now, what I would suggest is either the gum, nicotine gum, or lozenges, or the patch. Those are the three options. Some people like the, the snooze packages but that go in your, in your lip, but I'm, I'm, I've heard some pretty negative uh, research around the uh, cancer that it might cause uh, within your, your actual mouth. So my suggestion, stick with gum, lozenge, patch. Now all of those are going to come in doses that are probably too high for you, so you have to break them up uh, when you get started. What I chose was a nicotine gum. Uh, nicotine is, uh, uh, I think it's Nicorette is the brand, and that's widely available. You can find it anywhere. I just purchased a two milligram per gum uh, box, and like I said, this is an incredibly cheap uh, nootropic to, to purchase. And with this two milligrams, I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again. And so I was taking about 0.5 milligrams as a starter dose of nicotine. And then about an hour later, I took another 0.5 milligrams for a total of one milligram. So I tend to use that dosage regularly.